to uh, Home to Maine with me. Uh, sorry, it's not California. Uh, in particular, I mean, Maine is the only monosyllabic named state. We're simple people up there. <laughs> and uh, I want to take you to a place called Steuben, Maine. Not Steuben, Steuben, although up there we call it Steuben. Okay? I could slip into dialect. Uh, Steuben, Maine. Uh, the snow is my sister's house in Blue Hill, down the road a ways. Uh, that was just for a few weeks ago. Although she did say on Facebook yesterday she was able to get out to the garden and see the crocuses. So that's my house from a few winters ago. Um, and uh, it's where I like to go and rusticate, as we say. And uh, that's where I'll be in a month and a half. So it will be looking a little bright. Now, why would I want to take you up there? Uh, Suben is beyond Bahava. Here's Acadia National Park, Bar Harbor. That's as far as the forests go. We're over here. It's the easternmost part of the United States where the sun gets first. Right? Uh, it's a nowhere place. Thousand people population. But my great great grandfather, John McNamara, migrated there from Ireland. He was a <clears throat> Irish Catholic revolutionary fellow. Um, go figure. Nice hairline, though. I like that. Um, he, had a, he had a British friend who told him he'd best get out of town. So where he goes is Steuben, Maine, where there are no Catholics. And there's, even today, there's no Catholic church in that town or the next one. And yet, that's where he goes. Um, so here's the village. He actually was on the other side, another peninsula. But my house is right there, from 1888 map. But my house was built in 1845. And it used to be uh, an active harbor. You can still walk down to the harbor, but the boat's not there anymore. Okay, so we did a Wikipedia look at Scoop and Maine. Librarians do use Wikipedia, selectively. <laughs> we would uh, notice some information. Scoop is named after uh, Baron von Steuben, who was uh, one of Washington's helpers, trying to get the revolutionary troops uh, in good shape. The statue is not in Scoop it's in Valley Forge. <laughs> but the only notable person who has ever come from Steuben, Maine, is this woman, Martha Gallison Moore Avery. I, I didn't make the list, apparently. <laughs> and she said, Not yet. She, she's a Unitarian Socialist turned Catholic activist. What? There she is. Now that is a main girl right there. Um, anyways, she's a formidable looking lady. And apparently she was a formidable woman in her day. Uh, she was written up in this Boston Journal of uh, Education in 1906, where it says, Mrs. Martha Moore Avery is as independent a woman as the country produces and as plucky as she is independent. <laughs> She's from Steuben, remember? <laughs> and, and this, this little notice here, you know, for the first time it looks right for the metric system in the United States. <laughs> okay. This is all about irony, all right? Okay, she is written up in America Who's Who, and here's a, here it is, start with my own. Uh, and this is after the fact of everything, right? Uh, born in 1851, April 6th, oh my, her birthday is tomorrow. Yeah. Um, uh, her father is known as A.K.P. Moore. He's always called A.K.P. Moore, Albion King Paris Moore. But he's always known as A.K.P. Um, and uh, their ancestry goes back to people at Bunker Hill and Revolutionary War and all this stuff, there's still Moors up there. Uh, none of, in fact, the library 
in, in Stu Van Ness, the Henry, uh, the Her Henry Dyer Moore Library. They might be distant cousins. Um, but she, um, she comes, she, she marries a fellow to a first, I gotta get this in right order. Her mother dies when she, Martha, is 13. And she moves in with her grandfather, Samuel, who was a noted legislator in the uh, main state legislature, le the legislature. Uh, that was after we broke away from Massachusetts, you know. And, um, and so she went and lived with him, and it is said that she would go out into the fields and give lectures, speeches to the cows and the sheep, because that's what her grandfather did. So she picked up this political side. She moves up to Ellsworth, that's the road here. That's where the road to Baja is, by the way. Also the bean out of the store. And, um, and she gets involved in the Unitarian Church. There's still a Unitarian Church up there. And, um, and she meets this fellow, she's a milliner, she makes hats. And she meets this fellow by the name of Avery. Millard Fillimore Avery. We're not very clever up there when coming up with names. Anyway, they have a daughter, Catherine. Remember her name, Catherine. And, um, and they move down to Boston because he's a traveling salesman, a shoe salesman. And he up and dies in 1890, leaving Catherine and Martha in Boston. What's she doing? She starts getting involved with not only the Unitarian Society there, but also the um, <clears throat> socialists, uh, influenced by Edward Bellamy uh, and this idealism and that was rampant in those days, to the point that she becomes a lecturer herself on Karl Marx. She holds classes on Marxism. And here's a quote that you would think would fit her well from Marx. Yeah. However, she, something happens. She becomes a devout Catholic. And to the point that um, she is going to renounce Marxism and socialism for various reasons. Well, the interesting thing here is she never loses this, this spirituality and all that that she had learned in her uni Unitarian days. And she's very reasonable about her faith. It, it's not an emotional thing for her, necessarily. Well, she's from Stuben, all right? Yeah. All right. So how do we get there? Well, it's Catherine. Martha and Catherine go up to Toronto to give a lecture on Marx at the time. And she notices that her host's children have excellent deportment. And why do your children have excellent deportment? Why? Because they go to convent school. Oh, I'm going to enroll Catherine in convent school. Within three months, Catherine is a devout Catholic. She will actually become Sister St. Mary Martin, a nun, in the uh, order of uh, the Congregation of Notre Dame. Uh, so, shortly as things are starting to fall apart a little bit with uh, Martha's socialism things, where she's getting less and less enthused about them, because they're into things like free love. And she doesn't like that. And um, she, um, she also had made a new friend, David Goldstein. He's Jewish. She, Martha, under the influence of Catherine, converts to Catholicism as does David Goldstein, the Jew. He was a, 
of a London tobacconist. He made cigars, but was very involved in the unionizing of, uh, well, bringing socialism into the unions that were developing in those days. Uh, she becomes quite the person in this book. Uh, she's listed as one of the uh, foremost uh, female evangelists, because she becomes an evangelist for the Pope. Uh, but before that, these, these are uh, articles that come from the New York Times, um, which you can get in our library, by the way, microfilm. Uh, she got, uh, she got uh, fined for obstructing the, the roads in Boston. And, um, and she also got, uh, she went to a, a union meeting and the people didn't like her guys. And uh, they uh, called her all sorts of uh, disgraceful names and buffeted and bruised her. And uh, just flip through those. But then they flip over and become anti socialists. And they start, as much as they used to do stuff for the socialists, they now flip on the other side. And, uh, and uh, the two of them start uh, around Boston and around the country start uh, trying to, number one, promote Catholicism, because at the time when Catholics were being uh, dumped on, especially immigrant Catholics, uh, even though neither of them, well, he's, he's an immigrant, but he's from London, he's, but he's Jewish, he's not Catholic, but now he's Catholic. And, uh, but there's this irony, this disparity between going from socialism to being, you know, not socialist. And this the real irony is in the uh, Tip O'Neill Library. <laughs> and in this book, she's also written up, she and David, uh, where it's told about how the Archbishop of Boston supplies them with this one of several uh, vehicles. It's a Model T Ford, by the way. And it's a quotation from George Washington up there, uh, about religion is not to be uh, dumped on, uh, religious principles should not be excluded in, public, uh, in the public venue, and um, they call themselves Catholic to Hill. They actually have this ship out to California, and then they make their way back to Boston. They are also authors, they write together, uh, it's often, notice Martha Moore, she always uses Martha Moore. So that Stu Ben connection is still there. We always assume that uh, Martha Moore, Avery, is the real brains, but David, of course, being the guy, gets the top job. Uh, he, by the way, is 19 years younger than her. <laughs> this book um, is actually cited by Theodore Roosevelt as being something that uh, we need to look, read and look at to keep communism and socialism out of the public uh, realm. <coughs> Here's David in another vehicle in Boston, which is outfitted with a primitive sound system. Um, and they give, he and she continue to give lectures in the Boston area. I don't know if this is uh, bogus or not, but it's in the collection in the papers. If the Pollock Bureau, Bureau wasn't watching me so closely, I would sneak away long enough to meet the real Goldstein stock. He not only has read Das Kapital by Karl Marx, but understands it, and what's worse, he tears it apart at every opportunity stop in all of Russia. I haven't yet found anyone who has read it through stock, but every time I try to read it, I get a terrible headache. You'll say stop. <laughs> Martha dies in uh, 1929, but here's a picture of David with Catherine, now Sister St. Mary Martha. My question is, where are they? This looks like the rocky, rock, rocky rock-bound coast of Maine. I, re I could take you to places like that up in Stubbett. It could also be in Massachusetts City. Did they ever go back? That's what I think about when I'm up there. I think about these people. People who, you know, I don't, 
Martha, she was an anti-suffragist. She did not believe in women having the vote. Um, she was um, obviously very pro uh, anti-divorce, pro uh, anti and anti birth control, all of these things. Um, but so I sit here at my house and uh, think about them. And why? Why do I do this? Because my house was built by her father. She must have been born in my house. My kids say the place is haunted. <laughs> it's got to be Martha. It's got to be Martha. She, her obit, she was a notable um, character back in the day. And uh, she's gone, but not totally forgotten. This is a free handout uh, that you could get a few years ago. And in it, she cited this Stu Ben's most famous daughter. So, that's what I, as a librarian, have found out. Her papers and David's papers are at, uh, at the library at Boston College. I get to visit uh, there. Someday maybe I will. Other uh, papers are over in Nova Scotia. Why? I don't know. But it's close to me. So, any questions? Yes? So when Martha is tracing across the country with David Goldstein, she's still married? No. Oh. No, no. Mr. Mr. Avery long since had departed. Oh. Yeah. She converts, uh, he dies in 1890. Um, she converts 1904. 1904. David, 1905. And then shortly after that, they become these champions of the Pope. I mean, that truck was painted in the colors of the Vatican, yellow and gold. The bishop was pretty smart. He got, him, he got him, an ex-Unitarian and an ex-Jew to spread the Catholic message. You know, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. But, what else are you going to get from Stu Bailey? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh wait, we have another question. What is cosmic? <laughs> yeah. Um, Did you say it? it is an ideal thing. Yes, yes. Yes. There's this concept that everything has, is in order. It's all rational. It's all. <clears throat> yeah. And there was all this, these idealistic uh, religious philosophical movements back in the day uh, yeah. that, that she was into. Didn't get that up to too bad. Can you speak a little main E's for us? <laughs> <laughs> well, number one, there are no I's. In fact, I was telling one of our singers yesterday to drop the R in <laughs> ever, ever, ever. It's ever. Yeah. Any fool can drop an I. But to put an eye where it doesn't belong, now that is genius. <laughs> you know, Martha, Martha, not Martha, 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 Martha right? <laughs> and, uh, well, Bert and I got up at about 8 o'clock in the mid morning and went to get the deck chairs for the, for the, uh, I can't remember the story. <laughs>